Hey there guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Devil Cute and I'm back again today with another video. And today in this video, we're going to be talking about the new update for Adobe XD and it's the November update and it's now called Adobe XD 2.0 and 1.0 was released a few few weeks back at Adobe Max. So it's no longer in beta. If you already have a Clear Cloud subscription, then I think it should be there in uh, your Clear Cloud ready for download. Now, if you're new to this video or you're just trying to figure out what Adobe XD is, I do have a master course on Adobe XD, which is available on YouTube, obviously for free. Uh, the link will be in the description. It talks about everything about Adobe XD and what it does, what it's used for. So if you want in, so if you're interested to learn about Adobe XD, then I think that's a definitely a playlist you should consider watching. Uh, I cover in depth. So if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section or find me on Twitter or Instagram or even drop me an email. I'm pretty active and I reply to all that. There is also a video which I made for the August update and uh, the link will be down there for that as well. Now if you guys are wondering why there was a big gap between the August and the November update, uh, in September and October uh, there wasn't any update because Adobe was working on creating the new awesome features that I'm going to be showing you guys today in this video. It's a big bang update. I'm really excited to show. So that's the reason they didn't release any update. And um, right, so without further ado, let's check out all these features. Okay guys, so here is a just a simple project that I opened and this is uh, a UI kit that I found online for free. It's called the Macau UI kit. So this uh, is just going to be for, you know, just for showing you guys what the features are. But anyway, we're going to start off with the more, the less exciting features and then we're going to go to the more exciting features. Trying to make the video more interesting. So let's get started. So the first one is the artboard size for the iPhone 10. So obviously since the iPhone 10 release, it was a must for them to uh, create an artboard for the iPhone 10. So we have the iPhone 10 over here. You just click on that and there you go. We have uh, iPhone 10 with the dimensions. So the next one is about exporting feature. Now many of them have asked for a feature uh, on exporting for JPEG. So if I go here to export, uh, you can see now under PNG, I have SVG, PDF and JPG and I can click on that and even even choose my quality I can even set it to a lesser uh, than 100 and uh, greater than 80 so I can manually set it to 75 uh, and it's going to export it at 75 for me so exporting in JPG is a cool feature that they added now if you guys have any features that you guys want to want uh, and you guys want to request that you can go to adobexd.uservoice.com where you can list out your request and uh, if there is already a request you can just upload it and like it which will mean that it's going to be more featured and it's going to come on top of the searches for Adobe XD team to find out what the people are trying to look for and what they actually want in the software which is going to make their work faster and efficient. So the next one is a very small thing uh, that uh, you can do uh, for those who don't have a mouse when designing. So if you guys don't use mouse, you can use the, uh, you can put two fingers on your trackpad and just move around and that's going to navigate around your screen. As you can see, my mouse uh, pointer is right there and I'm not using my mouse pointer. I'm just using my two fingers and hovering over the uh, entire artboard to move. And you could not have done this in the previous version. Uh, so this is very handy when it comes. Now, if you guys want to know how to do it with the mouse, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is, is press the space bar and you press the space bar, you get the hand tool and you can click and drag that around. But for those of you who don't use the mouse, you can just use your two fingers and zoom in and zoom out. Also, you can pinch and you can pinch out to zoom in and zoom out. So that's pretty cool. So the next two ones are going to be relating to text. So let me show you. So the first one is a very interesting and I think uh, a very useful uh, feature uh, for the text. So if I go to my text tool and then just type in and I'm just going to type in Adobe XD and there you go. Now I'm going to scale this up pretty big. All right. So as you can see, it's pretty big and I'm going to go ahead and change the text, uh, the font of this. So let's try uh, something like this. OK, we have this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the fill. So let's add in a nice, uh, you know, like a pink. All right. So. Okay, that's looking good. So now that we have this text with a fill and you know, the font, uh, what I can do is when I click on the text again, and this is the new feature, I can type in, let's say, uh, Photoshop, 
And as you can see, it automatically takes the previous data of the text, which is basically the font, the size and the color and give my new text also that same appearance. And I don't have to go ahead and change the fill and the font yet again, because it already takes the data from the previous text, which I had typed and put that onto my new text when I'm typing it. So that's an amazing, cool feature for the text. So the next feature of the text is called as the point text and the area text. So let's take an example. So if I go here and I just type in, uh, let's say, Adobe XD rocks, uh, Adobe XD rocks. Okay, definitely I'm going to go change this to a simple font. Let's try uh, open sans and let's change the color of this to black. Okay, and uh, probably shrink this down to like 50. Okay. And let's zoom in over here pretty quickly. And what I can do is let's just add an exclamation mark. Okay. Now, if you see, if you come over here, you can see these two options that have been integrated. So one is called as an error text and one is called as a point text. Now I can go ahead and scale this up and down, or I can go ahead and rotate it however I want. Um, so that's the, what the point text allows you to do. But if I want, I can go and set this to an area text. And what that does, it turns it into a paragraph text, which means I can go ahead and shrink this down and I can pull this down. So I can change the alignment however I want. And if I have a large amount of data, I can either choose it to use it as a title, for example, or even probably as um, a paragraph if I wanted. And that gives a lot of flexibility to the way I control text in a user interface design. All right, so the next feature is something that I can't really show you, but it's just like an improvement update. So for those of you who didn't know, you can take your prototype and you can share it for the other. So you can click on publish prototype. And what that allows you to do is create a public link. So anybody else sitting anywhere around the world, having an internet connection and a laptop can view this on their browser and pin comments to it, give feedback. And the new feature is now when they make an update, now, when they pin comments to that prototype on the browser, you get an email notification saying this person commented so and so. So you will definitely know that somebody has looked at your prototype. All right. So the next one is more of a functional update, which is a pretty uh, helpful, I would say. Uh, so let's take an example. So if I come over here and just click on this button over here, let's actually click on anything over here rather. Okay. Now. There was an eyedropper tool that was sitting outside, but now this eyedropper tool is now on the inside. So as you can see, you can see the eyedropper. Now, the reason they did this is because of the fact that when you're choosing colors for the gradients, it was very difficult because you had to click away and click on the eyedropper tool for the gradient, which didn't make any sense. So let me pick another one over here. So let's just say I pick, let's say, let's, let's pick uh, this one, which you can see has a gradient. So I can go to fill over here. And if I click on the grade, which already has a gradient, what I can do is I can select this eyedropper tool and I can pick colors uh, from here. All right, so this is my first stop. So, and then I can click on the second stop and then I can click on this eyedropper tool here again and just come and pick on this and it automatically updates the color right over there. So this made it very easy when using the eyedropper tool for the gradients. All right, guys, so we have the last two features to go and this is gonna be awesome because this is the best feature I think Adobe has ever released for Adobe XD. All right, so the first one is about layout grids. Okay, so when you click on an artboard, you see this option called as a grid and you have two options over here. We have the layout grid and the square grid. Now, if I click on the layout grid, I don't see anything, but if I click on this checkbox, you see what we get over here, we get layouts. So for those of you who don't know the, the usability of the layout, what you, layouts actually help you to do is to make sure that your screen is divided into a particular amount of segments and each element sits properly evenly distributed and looks very well and organized and doesn't look very haywire here and there making the user confused so you can customize these grids as to however you want you can use a 12 column grid and eight column grid and if you're using apps some people use five column grids and three column grids so if i want i can set this to probably six column grids and i can get six grids and uh, depending on whatever color you want uh, you can change the color of it so if i go to red i can get a red grid and the best part is you can't touch this uh, grid and also the elements will snap to the grid so if i click on this uh, object let's say over here you can see that it kind of snaps which is very handy again so that you don't place the objects uh, in the wrong places and uh, let's try let's click on the artboard and I can also go ahead and change the gutter width so the gutter, gutter width is basically the distance between two grids so if I set this to five you can see the grid reduces and this again depends on your preference what the client wants the brand guidelines and so and so on and so forth and also the column width so if I change the column width 
you can see that you know whatever you want so that's completely up to you to decide and you can also set different margins for each side so basically the left and the right margins are the ones which which the designers kind of leave for the main content to be filled and if you want you can change this and you can individually go ahead and change this to how much ever you want and maybe you have a certain requirement maybe you don't this is going to help you in no matter way because it's completely flexible all right guys so now we are at the final feature and this is going to be the best and this is design specs now to give a brief introduction of this feature now when you create a design on a software like adobe xd or sketch you don't create the app just like that the app needs to be coded by a developer and that's when the app is ready but you that you as a designer who doesn't know coding has to give all the information that you have on your screen to the developer and the developer has no idea about designing so it's going to get very difficult to coordinate and talk and explain but now adobe xd has now allowed you to ensure that you can remotely provide all the details and you don't even have to talk to him you don't even have to see his face you just have to send him a link and he's going to get all the information that he needs to design the app so if i go to my prototype mode by pressing alt tab if i press ctrl a you see i have all these elements i'm gonna go ahead and quickly go ahead and prototype all this all right so i just go ahead and prototype all this and we are almost there and boom so now if i press ctrl a you see each artboard is linked to another artboard Okay, so now if I come over here to the share button and I can click on publish design specs. Now, the reason it says it's beta is because it's beta, people, they, they are trying to work on it to make sure it's faster, it's better. I think they're trying to integrate a couple of more features into this. I'm not sure about the technicality of it, but um, it's also available only in English. So that's the reason it's called beta, but it works perfectly fine and I've tried it out. So I can go ahead and click on that and I can choose create public link. All right, so now that it's been done, I can choose it to copy link or I can uh, open link or choose copy link. I'm going to go ahead and click on open link. All right, so as you can see, this is what the developer is going to see. And imagine him sitting somewhere on the other side of the world and he can see everything that you have designed. Now he can see all the screens that he needs to design so he can decide how much time he needs. And if he hovers on each O on each of the screens he can even see which element is linked to which artboard and therefore it's going to help him prototype much easier and to figure out the flow of the app or website now it also says the number of screens and also when it was updated and you can even search for so for example you have a hundred artboards you can even go ahead and click on search so let's just type in menu uh, hyphen one as you can see the artboard gets highlighted now let's get into the important stuff so let's say i want to uh let's zoom in closer to this one i can click on this and when i click on the artboard it's going to zoom out it's going to give me the size of the artboard and i can fit it to how much ever size i want and as you can see it tells me all the colors that are present in the uh, screen so this is white and it's going to highlight if i if i hover you can see it's going to highlight where wherever this uh, color is used and also i can see the typeface the font the size and even the color for the typeface and it also shows me this target which means it's going to tell me the screen to which the current screen is prototype to so i can just click on this and it's going to take me to the next screen which it has been prototyped to i can click on this back button to go back and i can click back in over here oh we were at this one okay now a couple more things if, if i select any one of the objects it's going to it's going to give you information about uh the distance between the edges and if I click on an element and then choose an, and just hover over another element, it's going to tell me the distance between those two elements. So it's going to help me decide where to place them exactly. And if I select the particular element, I can even come over here and find out the width, the height, the X and the Y axis, the amount of rotation, the color and the opacity. Now, another cool thing is I can change this from points to pixels to DP. So whatever the developer wants, he can set that to that one and it's automatically going to update over here. And also, I can change from hex to RGBA and I can also change it to HSLA. Now let's take another good example over here. So if I click on the word profile, you can see I have this color. And if I click on it, it says color copied, which means the color is copied. And now I can paste it in the coding software that I am using. It also tells me the content, which says what is the text that's been written. It automatically identifies that it's a text, which is pretty cool. And it, it can copy that as well. I can click on the font, which is gonna copy the font name and you can even see the alignment the spacing between the letters the kerning and all information that a developer needs to develop an app all right guys so that's pretty much it on all the new features for adobe xd cc 
version 2.0 and this is the November update. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to mention that in the comment sections down below. And if you guys are expecting any kind of Adobe XD tutorial, let me know what kind of tutorials you guys want because there are so many ideas and I don't know which one you guys prefer. So let me know and I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.